Matthias, great to have you on the call today. Really excited to hear more about your, your business. Waterfill Glass, we've had some conversations about this offline. What a great um, idea, what a great invention. I'm looking forward to seeing this come to market. But let me get you to introduce yourself to start off with, if that's okay. Over to you. Yeah, hello. Uh, hi, uh, and then hello, everyone. My, again, my name is Matthias. Um, I'm one of the uh, founders of Waterfield Glass Limited, a startup that that deals with, as the name suggests, um, a new type of glass technology for buildings, um, windows uh, that have water in them. Fantastic. So um, my next question is about what makes you stand out from your competition. So I guess you might need to tell us a little bit more about the technology, because I'm sure that most of the people listening and watching this will be going, what the heck's Waterfield Glass? <laughs> Yes. Um, so the the idea is that, um, as obviously the uh, material suggests, is a little bit uh, different because Vodafone glass works in a different way as other windows. Um, in order to to see this, I need to explain a little bit how how windows um, save energy. So windows lose energy in in three ways: um, uh, convection, uh, conduction. Um, uh, and uh, radiation. Convection is, is, is very small. Um, it's basically the, the air, indoor air taking energy from the glass surface. Uh, conduction is, is uh, typically managed through insulation as, as one can guess. And, but actually uh, the radiation is the big culprit. So um, about, when it comes to energy bills, the windows or curtain walls or skylights, um, affecting your energy bill, it would typically um, it would typically radiation. About two thirds of the energy bill coming from the glass is radiation. Um, obviously, that comes from the nature of the materials. Obviously, it's transparent, so a lot of radiation can come through. But also, it's a thin material, so it's not really blocking anything. We have some uh, ways with the industry currently that that manages this. For example, low low emission coatings, or low E coatings, and so on. But there is room for improvement, obviously, because because of the large percentage, and it's quite important when when the building uh, is concerned overall, because obviously the insulation capacity already is relatively low of a window compared to a wall. So so windows are responsible for a disproportionately high energy consumption and carbon when it comes to the when buildings concerned. So our solution, to put it simply, is to have water in the window. Water has a really good absorption uh, capacity, um, uh, and most importantly, it does it in the invisible spectrum of radiation, uh, or the majority happens in the invisible spectrum of radiation. So as a result, to put it simple, when um, in the summer, when radiation tries to get in, water absorbs it before we would get in, hence it saves energy on, uh, on cooling. And in the winter, the opposite happens. So when heat is trying to escape through the window, uh, the radiation is absorbed by the water, uh, so it doesn't happen either. And then we circulate this water within a closed loop, uh, so the heat absorbed can be reused by a conventional mechanical system of the building. So as a result, we can save a lot of energy. So the so to put the short answer is that the the game changing idea here is to addressing a very uh, specific part uh, of the window. So we are not insulating; we are uh, absorbing and that's a new approach uh, when it comes to energy savings um, and overall in design fantastic so i guess what makes you stand out from your competition there's only you doing it <laughs> is that right i yeah currently we are uh this is a patent to technology yeah. and obviously the the startup is the one that uh, uh that that was that is dealing with this technology that's correct fantastic. Great. So um, you mentioned that it's a startup, Matthias. Tell us about your aspirations for your business for the next five years or pick a number. It doesn't have to be five years. Yeah. So um, what we, um, the startup was was founded uh, coming from an academic background. So so my colleagues and I, we worked on the technology for quite a long time. Um, we we used uh, re uh, academic research grants um, in, in the European Union, in um, in Japan, and also in Taiwan to develop the technology. And once we, we reached a sufficient stage to understand uh, that the technology can work and establish the energy model to it and so on, which we published through academic publications, we founded the startup in order to 
to make this uh, a viable technology available to anyone who is interested in doing it. Yes. Um, our aspiration is to, we are, the, the company is um, R&D based licensing company. So what's important is that the technology is, is quite easy to manufacture and also to build if if the company has previous experience in the area. So what the, what the company mainly is concerned with is that we we help and teach companies, glass manufacturers, construction companies to use this technology so they can use it in their projects. Brilliant. So, and our aspiration is to uh, to enable uh, in the coming five years to make this new approach to energy savings uh, one of the major um, energy saving strategy for for especially for glass buildings. Fantastic. Great stuff. So what's been your biggest learning since you've been a business owner, Matthias? Uh, it's, um, I think it's like, um, uh, it is probably the most interesting challenge was that like, um, I, be I strongly believe if you're trying to create a good business approach, I think the starting question is, is I heard it somewhere, so it's not my idea, but I totally agree with it. Like, you should never ask yourself what people can do for you. You should always ask yourself what you can do for people. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, um, doing business is basically giving a service or solving a problem for yes. people. And mm -hmm. I found that an extremely good lesson uh, when when you when you start to create something. And World of Glass is all about that. So we, we're trying to give a much more efficient but also a much easier approach to energy savings to uh, to, to projects. And, and this credo for us, or this philosophy, is very clear uh, when it comes to the developing the product. For example, uh, we started, um, when we did our research, we started with a new build uh, solution, so what if it asked for new buildings? Uh, but actually, when, when talking to people uh, in the industry, we quickly pivoted to a second product, which was retrofit, which was developed uh, specifically from feedbacks of potential clients. And, and that was actually really exciting and a great learning process. I think the other element was that it comes from a little bit of philosophy from Japan. So uh, it you should uh, it was a great lesson to uh, to see how different people were involved. So, for example, we de when we developed the manufacturing with, with glass factories or the construction method with, with construction companies, it was it was a really exciting journey to to learn from each other. And that was the other lesson that uh, it is always extremely beneficial to to have an open mind and to learn from other people because uh, together you can create uh, a much more exciting things um, than than if you would just rely on yourself. Sure, couldn't agree more. Absolutely. That's a great point. Thank you. What's been your biggest challenge so far since you've been in business? Not, uh, let's leave all the, uh, the getting to the point where you could start the business alone and just think about since you've been in business, what's been the biggest challenge? Um, I think, I think it's like, it's, it's, it's hard to tell because we, we started very recently. So like the, for example, our first trade show was Future Build and uh, last month in March. Um, so I think it's exciting and it's challenging at the same time, probably that it's a very new technology. And yes. so, uh, so in order to kind of get your head around it, you have to uh, put for a moment aside the way you were trained. So, so for example, if you approach this from an en engineering perspective, um, you would say, okay, that doesn't make sense. I mean, Windows is supposed to insulate, and that's how they save energy. Uh, and and then, and water is not an insulating material. So what's going on here? And yeah. <laughs> and uh, so and I completely recognize that. So so it's it's difficult, you know, to give an elevator pitch. Uh, and then make a strategic decision whether you you know buy this or not. It's a uh, it takes a bit uh, more time and we completely sympathetic to that process. But that's an exciting thing at the same time, because once people, it's really not, it's really amazing to see that once people get their head around it, they, they get quite excited because there aren't many innovations happening in the glass industry. And, and it's, and it is at the same time, it is so important for us to bring innovations forward in that sector because 
uh, glass is just really responsible for a great amount of energy consumption within buildings. So even for um, uh, a standard domestic building where you would have like on the facade, let's say like 20% glass or uh, um, in terms of window to wall area ratio, yes. Yes. Uh, you would still typically the, those windows would be responsible for up to forty percent of your heating and 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 uh, cooling bills, if if uh, as appropriate for the climate. So so there is a big impact. You can we can create a really big impact with a relatively small change on the building. Yeah. So the biggest challenge is to change people's paradigm. But like everything, with our biggest challenge comes our biggest opportunity. I guess. Precisely. Yeah. Fantastic. Great. Um, with the knowledge you have now. If you could be speaking to your 18 year old self, what would you say? What, what advice would you give to you? Ooh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think, I think it would, it, I would probably refer to the, to the lessons that you asked before. So like, um, um never uh, you know always always have an open mind to learn and ask uh because because the uh the key uh for for i think for a successful startup is is to ask what people ask first what people need and if and yes. if you have the solution for that uh i think that's that's extremely important another element would be is that um uh that coming from a technical background, for example, in my case, it's 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 often uh, it's often uh, it's common. At least it was for my case. It's common to think that the technology equals the product or the service, uh, and that and that efficiency numbers uh, and measurements and performance already creates a product, and and you don't have to think about business models or or it's less important. Yeah. And then the performance of the product it's all what matters and and that's also not necessarily a case so like uh it's actually was a good learning curve for us to learn because the founders coming from technical background the three of us so um so it was interesting for us to learn through trainings and so on that like it's one thing that the product works you also have to explain how it will how it will be sold and and it's so the one thing that technology works but it's also important for you to think through like how it will become a product and how it will be how it will be delivered, how it will be sold, and and what is the business model behind it, yeah. and and that's from an investor perspective, for example, it's obviously as important as as the product itself. So sure. so that's that that would be something I would I would highlight as well. But also I would uh, I would also give encouragement to say like you. As long as it makes always critically reflect on on results and what you're doing to sort of learn from them, but as long as it makes sense what you're doing, don't give up. Yeah. Some great advice in there, brilliant, thank you. So my last question, and you may have answered it, I don't know, but it'd be interesting to see what else you have to say on this. What's the one piece of advice that you give to other business owners watching this? Um, Does anything else to add to all those nuggets that you've just? given us it's it's a bit tricky because i'm so i'm really young and mostly i work i work in academia so i wouldn't wouldn't call myself a business expert but but if it's helpful uh coming from that ex from that uh from that experience with that caveat uh mm -hmm. i think the i think it's we are living in an extremely exciting time because um because climate change is on us and and of course everybody knows that but um uh, it could be i think it could be on um it's it's an amazing challenge and it could be quite scary because unfortunately we are not doing as well as we should be doing at this yeah. point by 2023 yeah. uh and i really hope we can get there and i'm sure we can uh but at the same time i think it's a it's an amazing opportunity to to rethink our relationship with our own planet and with our world. So, um, and I strongly believe that, that if we, I think my advice would be that uh, is to have an open mind and look at it as an amazing opportunity to 
to radically change things that, that we do. I mean, like, justify, for example, if I think of ourselves having this meeting online, um, it's it's exciting to, in some sense, it's exciting to see that, like, how, how um, for a moment, putting aside how tragic COVID itself was, but it would have been almost impossible to have online meetings uh, before yeah. COVID and now how much our society changed. And of course, in some ways it changed for the better and some things it, it brought new challenges, but at the same time, there was a change and 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 it's it will be interesting to, it will be probably strange to think going back to something and uh, uh, something that was before. Um, and I think um, when it comes to climate change, that's how I'd like to see it. Uh, I'm hoping that I don't know. Hopefully, in by 2030, we we get to a completely different economy. When when we look a little bit back to uh, to the pre-change era, that yeah. uh, the way we we think of, about about business, about production, about about operating our uh, built environment, it's it's going to it would also look almost completely weird for us because because we radically can change and revolutionize our industry at, with the building industry especially but because it's responsible for about 40% of those emissions. So there is a great challenge in that. And But I think it will also come bring amazing opportunities. So for example, if I only think of water glass, for example, uh, it cuts a great deal of carbon and it does it in a low embodied carbon way, which is fantastic. And that's why we want to spread it across the world through license agreements as soon as possible. So people have the opportunity to do it. But at the same time, it also... Um, it also gives a, a new type of performance because, for example, you can have uncompromised views and daylight because you don't, from speak uh, thermal comfort or energy perspective, you don't need shadings anymore uh, because it just protects you perfectly. And, and that creates, for example, a new opportunities in architecture or the way we run buildings and so on. And, and I think that I find that prospect um, was, uh, extremely exciting, as almost as exciting as carbon carbon itself. And I'm sure there will be a lot of changes like that that will change our life in a positive way if we pass through the if we take the challenge head on. Brilliant, thank you. So, some fantastic points in there, Matthias. Thank you for that. Share. Thank you for sharing your brilliant product. Um, I think it's fantastic. I mean, we've had long discussions around this outside this interview and fascinated by it. So I'm really hoping that you can get the traction that you deserve to get for, for your product and, and congratulations for coming up with it. Um, the you. last piece is obviously I'm going to, um, all of your contact details will be available below this video so that people can get in touch and find out more. But is any, is there anything you'd like to add from that perspective in terms of helping people to get in touch with you or find out more or, oh absolutely so uh, we have um i think the basic touch point would be our website waterfreeglass.com uh we also have a linkedin page um uh, for the startup uh, we put we we always uh, keep it up to date and put a lot of information there so we like we even have a frequently asked question sections where people can look at and yeah. Uh, because again, it's it takes some time to get your head around there. We always put our publications there too, academic publications as well as uh, professional publications. So it gives so people can get a good overview about the technology. And we are always happy to uh, to answer and welcome questions. Um, you may be a high school student or a developer. Feel free to reach out to us and yeah. and ask any questions that that we can help with because. We, we are always excited to to engage about the topic and, and expand our network and give everyone the opportunity to try the technology and and uh, use it for, for their work if they want to. Fantastic. Um, I wish you every success in your business. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing your insights with us today. And uh, yeah, great to see you, Matthias. Great to see you. And thank you so much for the opportunity and wish all the best for everyone as well. Um, and you're listening. Thank, Thank you. you.